Hi, Andrew Camphy here with BetterSheets.co, helping you make better spreadsheets every single day. Hi, welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be counting numbers or counting IDs, counting text emails. This came about in actually in a very interesting, unique way. It came through Twitter. You can go follow me on Twitter at Camphy. But here on YouTube, I wanted to help you figure this out because the person I helped out on Twitter said it worked. It was exactly what they needed. They described it in a different way than I would have described it. What they were trying to figure out was the numerical frequency. That's how they described it. And so as you see, the title of the video is figure out frequency, figure out the number of times something appears within a list of data. We can use this in a lot of different ways. I use these formulas, which is count if, unique, and even sort a lot of times when I'm trying to figure out the business of how many, t how many people are buying certain things from me. So I sell products on Gumroad and I have lots of different products. So I have lots of different transactions, but unique buyers will have an email address. And so I actually use the same formulas to figure out which of the people that are buying from me are buying frequently. I'll segment them into different categories based on this frequency. It's very useful. Also in this particular case, the video I made for you figures out product ID or some semblance of like letters and numbers. So numbers and letters are combined as a product ID. You can use this for numbers only or text only. As I said, email is how I use it to count email addresses. If you're having difficulty implementing these three formulas, a few things that might happen as you do it is if you're trying to do it in a sheet that already exists, you might have stuff in the cells. So you might get an error that says cannot overwrite cell C54 or cannot overwrite cell A19. The thing you need to do is go to that cell in the error message and delete that number. So that's one roadblock that might happen for you, one challenge that you might run into. If you're interested in getting the sheet that I reference in this video and you're not yet a BetterSheets member, go and become a BetterSheets member at bettersheets.co. You can get a free membership which allows you access to now over 60 videos on bettersheets.co, track your progress. And if you want anything else, become a monthly member for $19 a month. And you can also get a lifetime membership, which gets you access to literally everything. You get every script, every sheet, every video. There's over 190 videos now on the way to 200 videos. Thank you for watching. Let's go figure it out now. Hey, so in this video, we're figuring out the frequency of, in this case, IDs or some kind of product IDs. You can do this with even emails. I do this personally when I try to figure out who has bought transactions, who has executed transactions with me the most amount of time. So I'll get, say, 8,000 emails or 8,000 transactions with people's emails. And then I will figure out through this process who actually does the most. So what we might have is a list of, again, product IDs or some kind of numbers or text that is repeated some number of times. If you can see here, this 599 number has A, B at the end, C, D, D, E, but it also has A, B again, C, D, D, E, here's A, B again. And as we scroll down, we then get uh, another set of sort of um, some very similar numbers, and then we might get a complete random numbers throughout. Maybe we have transactions. So you might have something like a thousand rows or a hundred rows. In this case, I have 80. This is very helpful when you have thousands of rows. And what we'll do here is I will show you what you usually do. What you might do is something like sort sheet and sort this column sometimes. Then you might like look at this and be like, oh, here's a unique one. You might have maybe only a few uniques, meaning like five or six. But sometimes, like in this case, there's mostly uniques. There, there's actually less ones that are repeating. But, so we're going to do a, use a couple of formulas here. We're going to use unique and we're going to use count if to figure this out. You don't necessarily have to use the sheet you're on. We can do this on a separate sheet. And actually, I prefer that. But I will show you that second. Right now, this is usually what you do. You try to figure out something really quick. 
you want to get the data right here. You just want to figure it out. So we'll just do equals unique. We're going to use the range B colon B and we'll hit enter. Now what we get here, we actually get the ID as well. We can get rid of that if we just do B2. We can do that. And we have much less numbers here. We have 35 numbers, whereas in our normal row, we have 80. So the moment you do this unique, you'll see a stark difference in the length of your array or length of the number set you have. Now, next to it, this unique column, since this is individual ones that are located on here, we need to know how many there are. So we're going to do count if, count if, col not colon, parentheses, now the range is going to be again B colon B. Same range as our unique. We're going to hit comma. Now what is our criterion? Criterion means we need to have like something to count. So we go here. We just select D2. Now if you're using something like a filter formula or function, this is going to be a little more, bit more complicated. You're going to do something like B to B equals D2, but in this case we're going to get zero, right? If we do that same thing as we do in filter, we'll know right away that we're wrong because it's zero. And we, we know 100% that this 141 number exists in this column. I mean, we can see it right there at the top. So we know we've been, we've entered something wrong. So we'll just hit delete. Now we have D2 and we end the parentheses. Now we get autofill. Now if autofill, if you happen to catch it sometimes, most of the time I don't catch this. I hit enter twice and I don't get this autofill again. You can hit command enter here to, to autofill. But let's say we don't. Let's, let's say we miss it somehow and we're like, oh shoot, like actually that seemed very helpful. We wanted to autofill. We wanted to know the count if well, you probably com command C, command V, copy paste. You probably command paste all the way down. But another much more faster way is go on the bottom corner here, E2, double click, and it autofills. And now we see this 12, 7, 5 count. This is great. We now have our count. Yes, as we can see, most are 1. All right, now, again, what you might be doing now is you might be like selecting these columns and going to sort sheet, Z to, not C, sheet, it'll be like range. Like you might select this whole range and you might say, oh, I want to, this is, might be what you're doing. Data sort range. And totally okay if you just need something quick and you want to do a couple clicks. But actually I find that this, what I'm about to do much simpler and easier. I just go to a next few columns over. I do equal sort. Now I take the range of D and E and the sort column is going to be the one with the number. So that's going to be number two. We have D is the first column. E is the second column. And is it ascending? This is the hardest part of this whole thing. Honestly, I almost get I almost get this wrong like 30% of the time. Is it ascending meaning? Do you want the result to go from lowest to highest ascending? Where actually in this particular case, we want it to be descending, which we, means we want the highest number of count at the top and the lowest count at the bottom. So in this case, all right, again, I, I get this like 33% of the time wrong. So we're going to write false and we're going to pray like, come on, let's pray for this. What, what do we actually get? We got it right. There we go. We got number 12, the 12 count at the top. Correct. Again, this is like the hardest part. If we write true here, you'll know immediately that it, actually you won't know immediately it's wrong if you don't know that there's multiple things, um, duplicates. If you do not have any duplicates, you're going to get a bunch of ones. If you have, are you, if you're actually counting repeating numbers or repeating text or repeating email addresses, you will get a number more than one. So that's something to look out for. But my, how I like to do this more is I like to do this on separate sheets. So actually I'm gonna go and show you that because Right at this moment, hopefully you can see what, what is sort of the problem of having 
all of this data on the same tab is it's very hard to share. Like what, someone else might not know these formulas. They might, might not know that these are three separate columns that mean three completely separate things. My preference is to do separate tabs for each of these. So I will go and do that now. Actually, I will delete all of this. I will make life a little bit easier. I'm going to delete the first column and have everything in the A column. There is one other reason why you might want to do this on separate sheets. And I will explain that in a second. So let's make sheet two. Let's go to, we're going to do the same unique sheet one. And this is why it makes it easier. Now we know, we 100% know it's in, in column A. So we can just write it without, without thinking much about it. Now we need the count. So actually we might want to label this count ID and count so equals count if. We're going to do our count if now it gets a little bit more difficult. We're going to do sheet one. You do have to get the capitaliz uh, capitalization correct, I do believe. Sheet one. And again, we know the where it is. So it's A to A. Criterion is going to be A2. So that's not that hard. Right there, A2. Now, if we hit enter, we're going to get the autofill, right? But we don't need autofill. We can just hit enter again. We have nothing. If we don't need autofill, we can just double click on this and we got the autofill. All right, now we're gonna create another tab and we are gonna actually call this sorted. I, I do that a lot. I try to do the tabs by how they are, what they do, what's the action they're taking. So sorted, we're gonna just go equal sort. Now what's the range? Because we renamed our, our sheet, it makes it much easier. We're gonna do count. A colon B, because we want two, both of those columns. We have the sort column is going to be two, because not the first column, we want the count. The ascending, remember we have, I think it's going to be false. There we go, perfect. We got the answer. So now we have a sorted tab. We have a count tab that does the work of the counting, and we have the sheet that has the number. Now, why would we want to put it on separate tabs? Here's one big reason, is that if you're doing this count once, you might do this count again. You might do this count weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, daily. <laughs> but you might also have more transactions. You might have more IDs to look through. You might have more products. You might have more this each time you do this or at various times. And if we have everything on the same tab, we, we make a possibility where the formulas at the top are not in the right place. Sometimes, say you're using a Google sheet to in, put information in, uh, sorry, a Google form. You're using a Google form to put information into the sheet. Well, a Google form will insert a row at the top. So then if we insert 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 things, our, our formula will move all the way down. So we don't really want that. So I like to keep a data sheet. So I will say, hey, I put in the count and the sorted formulas. The formulas don't end. They go the entire column A to A, right? We didn't say A2 to A20. We said A to A, A colon A. So if you add things, if we go here, we'll, we'll just take all of this and we'll put it at the bottom. Now our count's going to be different. I don't know if you remembered our count. It was like 12 is the top. Now 24. If we add this at the bottom a few times, let's say, let's say 900 times. Just saying 900 times. Go back to our sorted. There we go. We have 100 of this, 95, 89, 89. There we go. We have our sorted and our counts are completely automated and are updating automatically as we add data to this sheet. And we don't have to worry about moving formulas around. We don't have to worry about updating it, copying and pasting anything. We have all of our data. We can add another thousand rows and we'll see everything is doubled. There we go. Everything is doubled. This is a really fun way to figure out frequency of product IDs, of of email addresses, transactions, people who took transactions, names. Sometimes you're looking at sort of a list and you you know, you do have other options for dupli finding duplicates, but this is also a cool way to find a duplicate if you want don't want to be destructive. So we do have D 
data. We do have a, a duplicate detector in Google Sheets, but it's destructive. So you might want to just say, hey, there's two Al's or two Phil's here and figure out what you do in the next stop. stop. So count if is a really fun and exciting formula to be able to use. I use it a lot. Thanks for watching and I hope you make better sheets. If you're watching other videos here on YouTube and you see a script that I write, become a Better Sheets member and you can copy and paste it immediately once you're a lifetime member. If you haven't yet checked it out, I would check out atomicsheets.com, which is a new product from Better Sheets. It is a component library of Google Sheet tabs. So if you want to add something extra to your sheet, go and check out atomicsheets.com. Click subscribe to become a subscriber. I know like 50% of people who watch this video are not going to be subscribers. So become the other 50% and I hope to see you in the next video. Don't make any sheets, make better sheets.